We now understand that many proteins are involved in assembling a replication machine at an origin of replication, and in synthesizing DNA at a replication fork. Let's look at the process. While the E. coli origin of replication sequence, or OREC, is known, the sequence of eukaryotic origins of replication are not well understood, but they are rich in the bases A and T, so that the DNA in an origin of replication will be held together by fewer H bonds. So it should take less energy to begin unwinding DNA in an AT rich region. From studies of bacterial replication, we know that when it is time to replicate, several initiation proteins associate with DNA at the origin of replication, causing the double helix to bend, presumably weakening the H bonds holding the parental strands together. At the same time, SSBs, or single-stranded binding proteins, start to associate with the DNA as the strands separate, thereby keeping the separated strands from coming back together. Next, DNA polymerase 3 and primase enter the complex, along with other proteins. One of these other proteins is helicase, an ATP-dependent enzyme that's going to move in the replication fork to unwind more and more of the DNA as it hydrolyzes the ATP. Another enzyme is DNA ligase. Note that these proteins are shown forming on both sides of the origin of replication, reflecting bidirectional replication. Once elongation is underway, these replication enzyme complexes move away from the origin of replication in both directions.